Well, some someone made a joke yesterday. They were being sarcastic, but they were like, oh, I'll bet this film has a great blooper reel. And I was sort of like, I think it probably does. I mean, no one will ever see it because it wouldn't really make sense or be appropriate. But I mean, yeah, like, yeah, uh, you know what? <laughs> this She's just telling all my secrets. Um, but I think, yeah, it was like, there was an incredible amount of levity on the set. It was a very, like, um, boisterous sometimes. M mainly that was from me yelling. Um, because uh, sometimes I couldn't hear Mary. And she was always giving me these, like, really lovely, delicate pieces of, like, direction. And I would just be like, I can't hear you! Just yelling, <laughs> screaming across the serene Canadian landscape. Um, and I'm going to get a megaphone. <laughs> I think you should. It'd be great with a megaphone. I know. I think it could look good in my handbag. <laughs> yeah, in the dirt. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of, like, joyful, fun moments. No, no, I'm not going to be the person who talks about the depressing side of it every time. <laughs> Someone beats me to talking about the fun stuff, and then I have to be spokesperson for <laughs> coercive controllers everywhere, which I obviously don't want to be. Um, yeah, I, it obviously is a little bit uncomfortable to have to delve into that kind of stuff, especially, as I've said many times, that I think it takes a much deeper of you kind of imagine yourself, how you could be taken to those extremes of behavior. So then you are kind of carrying around a bit of that tension that, that finds its release in these really negative ways. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's uncomfortable, but y you have to do that to try to understand what it is you're portraying. There were a lot of conversations before we got to set, and I think that's quite important for building trust yeah. and also making sure that you're all making the same film mm -hmm. because uh, that understanding then means you can be a bit freer on set and go places where you might not go otherwise. And you're also... Not figuring everything. <laughs> Lennon and McCartney. <laughs> You're also not figuring out everything as you go. Like we already, we figured out a lot reading the script together over and over and over again. You know, so I feel like that also allowed for freedom. The beginning is obviously Alana Francis's script, so she sent us the script, and there was a kind of blueprint of um, the relationship in that. But then I think once Anna and I started discussing the script, that then changed and informed my view of how that would work. And then also Charlie and I had conversations and then Wumi Masaku, who's not here, and Ganya Dio and I would talk about the friendship aspect because there is obviously this very corrosive relationship, but there's also this great friendship between the women that's really important. So as Ganya Dio was saying, we had these extensive conversations, but then also every step. So when you're in pre-production, obviously when you're shooting, we, tr we were able to try stuff on set and um, both Anna was very open to, to doing variations. Charlie was very open. Um, and then when you're in the edit also, you're, you're looking all the time at what's reading. What do we understand of this character at this point? And you're trying to craft something that works throughout the whole body of the film, not just in an isolated moments. So it's a gradual process, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so I felt like there was sort of a little bit of like a parallel between me as the actor being there for Anna in such an extreme role. Um, and such a vulnerable role. Uh, I felt like I had to, s I, I was there to support her in that way, but also as Tess supporting Alice in the same way. And I felt like, you know, it's such a delicate thing because it's not like, because it's not like she's walking in with bruises on her face or, or you know, swollen lips or anything, but you're seeing the toll and how much this person that you love has changed. So I think it was really interesting to, to, to navigate that entire aspect, the, just, just the friendship aspect, was, which is like extremely important, especially if you're somebody who has, you know, there were times where I was like, damn, I experienced this as the friend or as the person who's being abused, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I, I was really, like we said, Mary and I, we all spoke about it a lot and what, what we had to, bring to it to be able to support Alice and Anna, the actress, you know? Did, did I ramble? <laughs> no, I think it was good. I would just say that at the script stage, when we were thinking about um, the two friends, um, Ganya Dio's role, Tess, and then Wumi Masako's role, Sophie, we were also thinking about how different people, when they have friends who are in this situation, they might intervene in different ways. And um, I would say that Ganya Dio's character, Tess, is a little bit more Aggressive. on the nose about it. She's more abrasive, mm -hmm. she's more direct, she's funny. 
Um, and then I think Sophie, as a character played by Wumi, is much more reserved. She doesn't say a lot, but you can tell what she feels about it. But then towards the end of the film, she does something very physical and takes an action, actually. Um, she's quite a practical, uh, physically able character, and she does something very pragmatic to stop what's going on. And it's, it's a huge catalyst and change in the film. So we really thought about how those two characters were distinct from each other. It's funny, I mean, we had, like, as we've been saying in, in the last couple of minutes, like so many conversations before starting and while we were filming, um, and there was like, there was something that we were always sort of dancing around and like, I found myself trying to describe what I wanted the film to be, and I could never really put it into language, and then um, one of the first people that saw the film and kind of gave me feedback said, um, you know, for the first half of the movie, I really wasn't sure what was going on, and I, I thought Alice might have been making the whole thing up, and I was like, right, yes, that's exactly it, because that's the experience. Um, so to sort of get people inside of the experience of questioning yourself was uh, was kind of the the goal um, I think uh, to just live in that gray area and that discomfort of uncertainty um, because it's uh, tempting to always push something uh, more like visually exciting, it's it feels more like, okay, we've definitely got a scene. And um, to like pull back on that and trust that the audience would be able to hang in that question um, was the, the thing that I think drew us all to the movie.